The most difficult part of your career will not be getting a job, but lasting in it. What helps you the most is being able to network, which is particularly challenging if you're an introvert like me. So today, I want to talk about what networking is, how I learned to network in consulting and being a creator as an introvert, the wrong ways to network, and what tools or resources have helped me the most to do so. Lastly, I'll show you a particular email I wrote while at ZS that I feel was my boldest move to network with over 13,000 ZSs. By the end of this video, I hope to show you the importance of connecting with people, how it can increase the longevity of your career and the right ways to network with people instead of just asking them for favors outright. For a very long time, I thought networking was a simple give and take. I offer you my skills and get offered a job in return. But I was wrong. Networking is almost like being part of a community, trying to collectively better it together. More about learning and growing from each other, where money just happens to be a happy byproduct. So how do you network? Within your company, the best formula for networking is to first be great at your job. That's the bedrock for all good professional relationships. No one wants to invest their time and effort into someone who isn't obsessed with what they're doing. Once you do that, you must start nurturing your curiosity about what others are doing. To be interesting, you need to be interested. People love attention, especially when it's from another top performer and is genuine. Be genuinely curious about what colleague you see in the elevator every day is doing or the person that sits on your team but you've never interacted with is up to. Also, you can do so by asking great questions. There's nothing more powerful than asking a question that makes people go, wow, I've never thought of that or what a great question. Someone that does this best is Sean Evans from First We Feast. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, man, another great question. That's a good question. I mean, oh man, you, just, you did your research. That was a very intricate question. Asking such questions forces people to think and not so much that they feel intimidated by you, but just enough that makes them go back into their memory to find an answer. One of the reasons why I always wanted a podcast is that I've always loved asking great questions, making connections that seem weird and unrelated, but in fact shed light on a new way of thinking. Now, asking such questions makes you stand out and more importantly, makes who you're talking to feel important and special. That feeling goes a long way in leaving a positive impression on them about you. Asking great questions can't be done without doing proper research into who it is that you're talking to. This might be active research that you did right before meeting someone new or passive research that's a result of cumulative curiosity that you've had about a certain topic for a very long time. Either way, knowing more than an amateur about a topic is a prerequisite to ensure that you don't ask dumb questions. And yes, there are dumb questions. Can I ask you kind of an important question? You know, like when you go to the ATM and you get money, is there an actual guy standing behind the wall who slides dollar bills in there? No. Anyone that tells you otherwise is wrong. If you're part of a premier organization or an institute, the automatic assumption is that the who, what, when, where types of questions are already known to you. The ones that you should be asking are questions that make the other person really think and showcase your ability to think through information before saying anything at all. All this by itself is challenging enough, more so if you're an introvert. What really works personally for me is to not think of introversion as a way of living, but just one of your many qualities. All introversion really means is that you feel energized by spending time alone instead of around people. It does not mean that you can't be around people. Your social battery might be just a tad bit smaller than extroverts, but apart from that, there's nothing stopping you from meeting and talking to new people. Being an introvert is not your identity, but just one of your qualities. Being interested by doing your research and asking great questions is the meat. And although important, without the proper delivery system, they won't be enough. Have you ever found yourself talking talking to someone only for them to look away and seem distracted or worse, start talking to someone else. It's incredibly frustrating and honestly, often humiliating. Your body language is crucial to ensure that the intent of your conversation does not lose its way because of your delivery. Simple things like maintaining eye contact and not breaking conversation no matter what, avoiding folding your arms and having an open welcoming feel all go a long way in making people feel more comfortable talking to you. Now, networking in a job and as a business owner or a freelancer is a little different. As a business owner or a freelancer, networking is often reaching out to people on LinkedIn via cold emails or cold calls or cold videos and other means to get their attention. But more importantly, knowing what you have to offer in order to make even the idea of talking to you worthwhile for them. For me, it could be services around branding and content writing or video editing and visual storytelling. Now, knowing this value prop and being able to say it in simple terms in under 10 seconds 
seconds is probably the most powerful weapon in your networking arsenal. After that, it's just asking great questions, showing that you know your stuff and then reiterating the value prop and ensuring that whoever it is that you're networking with is equally benefiting from the interaction. At this point, we've talked about a lot of different ways to network, but to reach our goal of effective networking, it's also important to know what are bad ways of networking and what does that look like? This also is a good way to think about life. You see, in life, you not just need to set goals, but also anti-goals, things that you don't want from the desired outcome. Now, bad networking is selfish. As much as possible, you must try to keep the attention on the other person. Never talk about yourself, always about her. By not talking about yourself, or at least very minimally, you actually prime the other person to feel interested in what you are doing and return the attention to you when they are done talking. Bad networking is also fake. We as humans are extremely sensitive. If you talk to people with the sole intention of getting something out of them, they will sense it instantly. You need to be genuine. and truly immerse yourself in getting to know the other person in front of you. The only thing worse than someone talking to you to get something is someone only talking to you as an obligation. Now, I'd be lying if I said I learned all of that just by experience. A large part of self-improvement is reading the right books. You don't need to read a hundred different books but just a few books a hundred times. Two books that have tremendously helped me get better, all types of social interactions is how to win friends and influence people and how to talk to anyone. Now, how to win friends and influence people is something that I find myself coming back to time and time again. There's a reason why it remains to be a classic read even after 70 years of being published. It's simple to read and has practical tips that you can incorporate in your social interactions at absolutely any level. Okay. So like I said, to wrap this video up, I want to show you a solid example of when I employed a lot of these tactics into an email I wrote before leaving ZS. Now, farewell emails aren't uncommon, but the way that I thought about it might be a little different than others. Now, much like any other company, ZS has a tradition of sending out farewell emails. Often these mass emails have thank you notes to people or groups clubbed together, which while being a great way to express gratitude can be greatly improved by one simple thing which I did. In MS Office, there's a way to automate email writing, especially to a large number of emails. The process is called mail merge, and you can use a template email with certain variables in order to customize each email, changing contents of those variables using an Excel sheet. So for my farewell email, rather than send out one email to a lot of extra people, I sent out only two. Well, technically. One email was to about 40 people, customized to each of them, and another was to about 13,000 people, worded in a way that still seemed relevant to them and genuinely thanking them for being part of my ZS journey. Now, the intent of these emails were not just to market my YouTube channel, which I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to do that, but to genuinely thank everyone in some capacity for making ZS what it was, to still stay in touch with them through social media and content even after I had left the firm. Overall, I was able to forge a deeper connect. Everyone that I had worked with, even finding senior ZS leaders volunteering to mentor me even after I had left the firm. So that's it. Hopefully that gave you a good enough reason to really work on these soft skills and start talking to the people around you if you haven't done so already. Also, if you've been following my vlog and seen the 10th vlog, you'll know that I may be starting a very exciting opportunity very soon, which I also got through network. Maybe I'll tell you more about it in a future video, but I will also be including both the email templates in a Google link linked below all for free. So the next time you have to write a farewell email, you can customize it like I did and leave a lasting impression on the people that you send it. That's all from me. Do subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful and I shall see you in the next one. Gyan batao, gyan bhadao. Peace.